I'm Dr. Whitney Caceres. I'm a pediatrician and a spokesperson for the American Academy of Pediatrics. Most importantly, I'm a mom, and I care deeply about the health and safety of my children, just like you do for yours. I get a lot of questions from parents about vaccines, and many of them are about information found online, a lot of which is scary, and a lot of which, as a medical doctor, I know is just false. Here's the truth. Vaccines teach your body to fight disease. So in this video, we're gonna talk through some of the biggest myths parents find online about vaccines. First, I wanna share with you what I've learned about how this wrong information gets out there in the first place. The thing you should know is most of the anti-vaccine content you find on social media platforms actually comes from a very small number of people. Their posts may seem authentic and convincing, which is why they're so effective at influencing concerned parents who are just trying to keep their children healthy and are searching for answers to their very, very legitimate questions. These posts can spread very easily and be shared by tens of thousands of other people who may not know even where the post came from originally. In fact, a research group looked into this in 2021 and they found that 65% of the anti-vaccine posts on these platforms actually originated with just 12 individual people. 12! And they use anti-vaccine messages to draw more traffic to their own websites. It's really the worst kind of clickbait because it scares people away from a vaccine that could actually save their child's life. Another problem is that social media platforms don't filter well for accuracy. What they tend to promote is content that already has the most clicks, and perhaps something that was shared by a celebrity or just someone with a lot of followers. You're seeing it not because it's the best or most accurate information about your baby's vaccine. You're seeing it because of their algorithms and what's most likely to appeal to the most people. It's not always easy to tell what's true and what's not. Once you interact with just one false piece of information, the platform will show you similar kinds of content, sending you into a disinformation rabbit hole without you even realizing it. It's a really big problem and it's not your fault. And in fact, sometimes when experts like me post accurate content, there are targeted attempts to drown it out. So I tell all the families in my practice to have a very high level of suspicion if you don't recognize and trust the original source of the content. Here are some places you can trust. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or the CDC. The American Academy of Pediatrics, which has a great parents website called healthychildren.org. The hospital or children's hospital in your city or state, or your own pediatrician's website. These are all really good places to go. Another great place, an actual conversation with your child's pediatrician. Finally, let's go through some of the biggest myths I hear about from parents in my practice. Number one, parents are concerned about getting their baby multiple vaccines at one visit. This is based on a myth spread several years ago which is still circulating, that babies' immune systems can be overwhelmed by getting more than one vaccine. This is completely false. The amount of active ingredients in each vaccine is a tiny amount. Your baby is exposed to much more in their regular environment every day. All the vaccines we recommend to be given together have been tested together, and babies do completely fine. Number two, autism. This is a big one. This myth started way back in the 1990s when a paper was published by a doctor who looked at 12 kids and theorized that their autism was due to vaccines. That paper was discredited because it turned out to be based on bad science and the journal retracted it. But it caused enough fear amongst parents that a lot of other scientists, good ones, studied the question, including multiple studies in different countries with thousands of children and they found no link. Number three, a lot of questions pop up about the ingredients that are in vaccines. And if you search online, you will find some very scary descriptions of toxic vaccine ingredients. The truth 
They are not toxic. Let me give you the basic recipe for most vaccines. It's actually quite simple. Antigens. This is the main ingredient, the little piece of an inactivated virus or bacteria, which is what trains your immune system to recognize the real virus. All vaccines have antigens. Aluminum salts. These help make the antigen work better so we can have a smaller dose of the vaccine. But guess what? Aluminum is part of the earth and your baby also gets aluminum in their breast milk and food. The amount in vaccines is small. Preservatives. Since most vaccines come in multi-dose vials, we need a preservative to keep germs out of the vaccine vial. That's really important and it's safe. Some vaccines also have very small amounts of other ingredients, and all of these are safe and have been studied extensively. As a pediatrician, I know vaccinating your children is one of the most important steps you can take to prevent unnecessary antibiotic use, hospitalizations, and even death in your family. I am so glad my own kids are vaccinated. These are just a few of the myths. You've probably encountered others and who knows what will pop up online tomorrow. The best advice I can give you is to look to sources you know and trust when you're seeking information about your child's health. And never hesitate to talk with your pediatrician. We welcome your questions and we are on your team. We are here to help you make the best choices for your children and to keep them safe and healthy, just like we do for our own little ones.